Okay. All right, let's talk about what a zero is or a root um, in terms of the graph. So if we're graphing some function and I'm saying look at the zeros or look at the roots, what am I asking? Ange? Excellent. We are looking to see at what point does our graph cross the x-axis. Um, and why do you think it's called a zero? So we said the zero is where our graph or function crosses the x-axis. Why do you think it's called a zero? Alexi? Because you have like points that would be zero. What's at zero? Not the x. Because we're crossing the x-axis in different directions. But you're right. Something will be at zero, just not the x. What is it? The y. The y. We call it a zero because when we cross the x-axis, the y is always zero. Okay, so how do we find this on the TI-84? I'm going to show you two different ways to find the zeros on a calculator. Uh, we'll write steps to find zeros on TI-84. All right, so we are going to graph the function. We're going to find the appropriate zoom window. Then what we're going to do is we're going to press the blue second button and then trace, but above trace in blue, it says calculator, the calc, C-A-L-C. And then we choose option two, which says zero. Now, this isn't going to make sense until we actually do it, but let's just keep writing it all out. Then we're going to move the cursor to the left of the zero. Hit enter. Then we're going to move the cursor to the right of the zero. Hit enter. And then we are going to hit enter one last time it will say guess there's all the stuff Okay, so I'm going to show you this method, and then I'm going to teach you another method. Are we ready? So let's practice. Let's find the zeros. Of P of X equals negative 16 X squared plus 64 X plus 
Okay, are we ready to go to our calculators? So let me pull up my 84. I can never get there. All right, before we enter in the function, because everybody's starting with their calculator at different points, what I want us to do is I just want us to make sure that our Zoom window is to standard. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. You're going to press Zoom. Do you guys see in the top um, row, the very top row, third one in says Zoom. You're gonna scroll down to where it says number six, Z standard, and then press enter. Don't worry about my graph, that's from before. Okay, did everybody do that? Okay, so now we're going to enter in our function. The way we enter in our function is you go to the top left corner, see where it says y equals? That's what you click. And now we're going to enter in this function. So we're going to enter in a negative 16x squared. Now be very careful, do not use the minus sign. If you use the minus sign in this specific scenario, it will come up as an error. So the minus sign is next to the six. The negative is under the three. So, Bina? Could you bring it up? Oh, you just have a whole bunch of, you have something already in there. You just clear it out. Thank you. You're fine. Okay. So now we're going to enter this in. Remember I said do not press the neg minus, press the negative. So we are at negative 16x squared. Now for the squared button, so this, sorry, the x is right diagonal from the blue second button. There's your x. Now for squared, you can either press this x squared button or I'm going to show you another way in case we have other exponents like to the fourth or the fifth degree. We're going to do an up arrow. and then press two. Now, if you have an 83, you're already out of the exponent. But if you have an 84, to get out of that exponent, you're gonna press this side cursor, and that takes you out of the exponent. So now we have negative 16x squared, and we're gonna write plus 64x plus 80. Does everybody have this? Now to see what this function looks like, we press graph, which is the last button in the top row. And all I care about are what? The zeros. Do we see two zeros? Yes. Um, how many zeros should we have and how do you know? We should have two. How do you know we should have two? Because the highest degree is two. Because I have two zeros and I see it going through the x-axis twice, will I have any imaginary zeros here? No. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to find these zeros. So we're going to press the second button, the blue second button. And then do you guys see trace, how above trace in blue it says calculator? So I'm going to do second trace, traces in that very top row again. And do you see how option two is zero? That's what we're going into. Am I going too fast? Are we all following? All right, press enter. All right, so now we need the left bound. In order to get the left bound, I need to see the cursor. Now, the way we will do, we have to do them separately. So I'm going to do the zero first. The way we read a graph is from left to right, always. Always read a graph from left to right. So if we're reading this graph from left to right, do we agree that the left bound will be under the zero? Right, if we're reading from left to right, it's going like that. Something like that, right? So we need to get the cursor under that zero. So I'm going to move my cursor to the left. So right now, my cursor is at zero. So obviously this is to the left, right? So I'm gonna move my cursor to the left. All 
All right, I see my cursor. Do you guys see it? And now this is the closest I can get without being over it. So I'm going to stop here and I'm going to press enter. All right, now what is, what is it saying? Right bound. So what does that mean? I have to go above my zero. So now I'm going above my zero and there's the cursor above it and I'm going to press enter again. And it says guess. When it says guess, what should I do? Press enter one last time. And what does it give us? Our zero, negative one. So let's go back to our notes. We're gonna say, we're gonna list out our zeros. X equals negative one. Yes. Yep. If you simplified first, it would still be the same thing. But because we're using a calculator, it just sort of be the waste of our a waste of our time to simplify it. All right. Now we need to find the other zero. So now to find the other zero, we're going to do this process all over again. So we're going to go to our second trace. You know what's up? Are you guys doing a negative or a minus for the 16? The negative is under the three. Okay, guys, let's go on to the next one. So now we're going to find the other zero. So to find the other zero, we're doing this process all over again. Second, trace, zero. And now it wants the left bound. But remember, we read a graph from left to right. So the left bound of this zero, is it above it or below it? Above it. The left bound is now above it. So now we're going to move our cursor above it. And it's okay if it disappears. It will come back. Just go slowly. Don't go too fast. If you go too fast, you'll probably lose it. So right now I know where it is because it's saying the X is zero. So that means it's still all the way up here somewhere, right? So because the X is zero, I know I need to come past zero. So I'm going to keep going to the right. I'm coming down now. See, the Y's are coming down. It's not, those are the intervals. Those are points on the graph. There we go. Okay. So I need a left bound. So it's already estimating for us that our zero is five, right? But we're gonna go above it. When I go to go left bound and go above it, my cursor is gonna disappear. I'm not gonna see it. That's okay, because I know at this point, if I go back up, it's going to be above it. So now I'm going back to the right, uh, to the left, press enter. And then when it says left bound, I'm coming below it, even though it disappears, I'm going to press enter, press enter again, and there is our zero at five. So we have x equals zero, x equals positive five. Okay. Yes. Yeah, but it's not always going to be so clear. Sometimes it will be a little bit off. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a second way. Are we ready for the second way? So this was method one. Can we use whatever we want? Um, 
I think I, I don't remember. I'll let you know. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to say something and then be wrong. Okay, are we ready for method two? Okay. So to find the second method of finding the zeros, what we're going to do is we are first going to list all possible rational roots. This is still on the calculator, but on paper, we're going to list all possible rational roots. Then what we want to do, we're going to enter the function. Into the calculator. Then what we want to do is we want to make sure a certain setting is correct. So we're going to check a setting. And once you check it once it, and fix it, it will always stay in that setting unless you change it. So to fix our setting, we're going to press the second window, which in blue says table set. And then we need certain things. We need the table start to equal zero. We need the table to equal one. And now this is what I'm gonna put a star here. This is what we're going to change. Where it says independent, we need to change it to ask. And then the dependent, we will keep on auto. This I'm going to do with you right now. And after we do it right now together, you don't have to do this again, right? This we're gonna do together right now. After we do it together right now, you do not have to do it again. Unless you don't have a calculator today, then you're gonna have to do it on your own when you get a calculator. Okay, so now after that, we're going to go to second button and then graph, which says table in blue. At that point, we are then going to enter all possible rational roots. and we will press enter after each entry. And then lastly, outcomes of zero in the Y column our actual roots. All right, here are all our steps. Finish copying and then I'll show you how it works. Are we ready? Is anybody still writing down? Yes, a few people. Okay, we ready? So the problem we're going to do, our example here, 
is going to be 12x to the fourth minus 20x cubed minus 11x squared plus 5x plus 2. So in this second method, the first thing we want to do is find a list of possible rational roots, which we call P over Q. So we need factors of our constant, which are going to be plus minus 1 and plus minus 2, over factors of our leading coefficient. What is, uh, what is our leading coefficient here? 12. So we're plus minus 1, plus minus 2 plus minus 3, plus minus 4, plus minus 6, plus minus 12. Now what we do is we pair every numerator with every denominator. So we are plus minus 1 over 1, which is 1, plus minus 1 over 2, plus minus 1 over 3, plus minus 1 over 4, plus minus 1 over 6, plus minus 1 over 12. Am I done? No, now we go on to 2. So we have plus minus 2 over 1, which is 2. What's 2 over 2? 1. So we're, we already have that. We don't have to write it again. Plus minus 2 over 3. Isn't two-fourths a half and two-sixths one-third and two-twelfths one-sixth? So do I have to write any of those? No. So these are all of our possible rational roots. Okay, now let's go to our calculator. So um, actually, let's fix our table setting first. So let's go to second table or second graph. Oh, sorry, not second graph, second um, window. Sorry, second window. And mine is already set up because I have set it like this, so it doesn't change once I set it. But for you, anybody who has a brand new calculator, chances are yours says independent. Uh, for independent, it says auto. What you want to do is you want to move your cursor down and highlight it on black, uh, highlight black on ask. So if you have a new um, calculator, this is probably highlighted black on auto. You want to change it to ask. Once you do it once, it will stay that way forever unless you change it. And table start is zero. Table start is zero. That's what we wanted. What do you have it as? Negative zero. Oh, there we go. It doesn't matter. All right, we good? Yes? All right. So now we want to enter in our function. So we're going to now press second. I'm oh, sorry, not second. Ignore the second. Just press y equals. Clear out your previous equation that we just did. It has to be cleared for this to work. We can't have anything else except the equation we're working with. And now we're going to enter in our new function. Are we ready? So we want 12x to the fourth power. So I did 12x, and now to get the fourth power, we're going to do the up arrow and 4. come out of your exponent. Now, the only time we use a negative is if it's negative in the leading coefficient. After that, if it's a minus, we just do a minus. The only time we do a negative is if it's just if it's still the first leading coefficient. But now we do minuses. So we're going to say minus 20x to the third, come out of your exponent, minus 11x squared plus 
plus 5x plus 2. All right, before we go into this, I'm going to just list on the board our possible rational solutions that we had gathered. So we had plus minus one, plus minus a half, plus minus a third, plus minus one fourth, plus minus one sixth, plus minus one twelfth, plus minus two, and plus minus two thirds. All right, so we'll reference those in a minute. All right, now we go to the graph. To see the graph, all you do is press graph. Let's look at it. All right, so here is our graph. What are we looking at? What do we only care about? The zeros. Now, this point right here, do we see this point right here, the first zero we have to the left? It looks like it might be a double root. Does anybody know what I mean when I say a double root? Sam? It only crosses the x-axis once. Yeah, meaning it hits it and then does what? Bounces back up. But this is why we need to be super careful with these graphs, because sometimes it looks like a double root from a distance, but it's not really a double root. What do I mean? I want to see if maybe it does go through and I'm just not seeing it because we're too far away. So what you do is you move your cursor to it. So do you see how my cursor is blinking on it? Then I want to zoom in to see what's going on. So in order to zoom in, in my top row of gray buttons, I press zoom and then zoom in. I press enter. Every time I press enter, it zooms in again. No, it's not going to erase. Just go back to zoom standard. So when we zoomed in, what do we see? Is this a double root? Is it a double root? No, it's going through. So in this one area, how many roots are there? Two roots. How many roots should I have to all together? Four roots all together. So let's see, we're gonna use our cursor to help us identify which roots these are. Okay, so this first root, it looks like it's negative 0.49. What is that around? This first root? Negative a half, right? All right, let's keep going. Let's go to this other route. Let's move our cursor. All right, this is negative 0.33. What fraction is 0.33 around? One third. So then it's around negative one third. All right, now let's zoom out. Let's zoom back out. Or we could go back to Zoom standard. Let's go back to Zoom and then standard, number six. So I estimated my two roots over here. Aren't there two more roots here? Let's bring our cursor to see where they're around. So I'm going to move my cursor. All right, what does this look like? Positive a half. And let's go over here. What does this look like? Around two, around two. So these are the possible rational roots we're gonna test first. So we did a little bit of legwork to make our lives easier so we're not entering 50 million possible rational roots. Now we're gonna go to our table to test these points. To go to our table, what you do is second graph. When you press the second graph, see how it says table in blue? That's what we want. Now, I have a list of whole things because I've entered things before, but that's okay. All you do is press clear, and now you enter in your first x. My first x is negative a half. So what you do is you don't press minus. You do the negative underneath the 3, and then 1 divided by 2. 
enter. And then if this first one here, did it yield us a zero? Yeah, it yielded us a zero, which means negative a half is absolutely a zero. What am I going to check now? How do I get that table? No, no. What did you just do after you get the table? So I entered in my first zero that I think will work, which is negative a half. So I typed in negative one divided by two. Oh, okay. I have I've had like the equation entered right, but like my graph, like the actual graph looks like nothing like doesn't make sense. That means you didn't enter it right. But like I checked it like six times. Because you did a negative instead of a minus in the middle. See how you put negative 11 x squared? That needs to be a minus. Okay. So you only use negative if it's the leading coefficient. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, can we keep going? So now I tested negative a half, it worked. What should I test now? Negative one third. So we're gonna do negative button, one divided by three, enter. Look at my second one. Did that yield us a zero? Yes, so the negative one third worked. What am I going to test now? Positive a half, so I press clear, and now I do one divided by two, enter. Again, it worked. And the last one I'm going to test is two, and they got us a zero, so that worked. How many zeros should I have had? Four. Did I get all four zeros? Yes. So let's go back to our notes and write these out. So x equals negative a half, negative one third, a half, two. If we see on the graph when we're first like finding the numbers, that it just looks like, like when we get negative 0.49, negative 0.33, can we just assume that it's going to be negative one half and negative one third? And not test it, you mean? Yeah. No, because sometimes it's irrational, like the number's irrational, and you think, okay, I found the fraction that's pretty close to that irrational number, and it ends up not working. Oh. I'm going to show you one of those next. Okay, let's do another one. Are we ready? Yes. Yes. So when we're solving and we're finding the zeros, we know the degree of the polynomial tells us how many zeros we're going to have. Now, let's say there's four zeros and we only see two of them on the graph. What does that mean for the remaining two zeros? That they are imaginary, right? Um, if the zeros are irrational, can somebody tell me a number that's irrational? The square root of two. If the number's irrational, like the square root of two, will it still show up on my graph? Will I see it crossing the x-axis? Absolutely. But will it be part of my list of possible rational roots? No, it will not be part of my list of possible rational roots. So then we have to take another course of action beyond that. And that's what I'm going to show you now. So I want us to find all zeros. of 6x to the fourth minus 29x squared equals 5x to the third minus 25x plus 5. All right, to start, before we even start listing possible rational roots, before we even touch our calculator, there is something wrong with this format. What is wrong? Somebody besides Ange. What is wrong? Anthony? Um, what does that mean? Oh, uh, the, the exponents are from greatest to least. 
Okay, well, even more so than that, aren't they on different sides of the equal sign? So how do I fix that? Bring them to the other side. We're going to bring them to the other side and simultaneously put them in descending order. So I'm going to subtract the 5x cubed. I'm going to add the 25x, and I'm going to subtract the 5. So here we will have 6x to the 4th minus 5x cubed minus 29x squared plus 25x minus 5 equals what now? Zero. That's what we want. We need it to equal zero. Now let's list our possible rational roots. Let's list our p over q. So we are plus minus 1, plus minus 5 in our numerator. In our denominator, plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 3, plus minus 6. We are going to pair every numerator with every denominator. Plus minus 1, plus minus a half, plus minus a third, plus minus one sixth. Then plus minus 5, plus minus 5 halves, plus minus 5 thirds, plus minus 5 sixths. I'm going to write these on the board. Are we ready? Let's go to our calculator. Y equals, let's enter in this function. Remember, unless it's a leading coefficient, for a leading coefficient, you'd use a negative. For everything else, it is a minus. All right, so here we have 6x to the fourth minus 5x cubed minus 29x squared plus 25x minus 5. I will give you a second to finish typing. Does everybody have it? Let's press graph, see what this looks like. Once again, it looks like we might have what? In that middle. It looks like we might have a double root. We don't know for sure, so what should I do? Zoom and then zoom in. Once we zoom in, what do we realize? Is this a double root? How many people say yes, it's a double root? How many people say no, it is not a double root? Why are only three people voting? How many people say yes, it's a double root? How many people say no, it is not a double root? Okay, it is not a double root, guys. A double root, what a double root looks like is like y just equals x squared where it hits it and then bounces back up. What's happening here is we're hitting it, going through, coming back down, okay? So double root hits it, bounces back. Not a double root, comes through. So once again, is this a double root? No, this is not a double root. So let's estimate where these would be. So while I'm zoomed in, while I have it clear, I'm going to go to the left. And what does this look like? Around positive point three. 
Well, what is 0.3 close to out of all these fractions? One third, right? 0.3 close to one third. Okay, now let's go to the other one. Oop, what's going on here? It's getting angry. All right, this one looks like it's about 0.53. Do we agree that's close to a half? All right, so now how do I look? Oh, I could look at one of them over here too. Which one is this? This says 2.25. Which of these is close to 2.25? Five is not close to 2.25. No, five halves. Five halves is the only one. Do we agree five halves is the only one that's even remotely close to 2.25? So we'll put five halves in the list. How do I get back to that fourth root? What should I do to see the last root on the graph? Zoom what? Or zoom standard, yep. All right, so I did zoom standard. Now I'm gonna go to this one. All right, and now it's negative 2.19. Do we agree the only thing that comes close to that is negative five halves? All right, now let's go to our table. Second graph. I'm going to clear and enter in one third. One divided by three. Does that work? Yes, one third works. So this one works for us. All right, now I'm going to type in a half. One divided by two. Oh, guess what? That one works. All right, now five halves. So for five halves, we do five divided by two. What happened? Did five halves work? No. I'm going to now try negative five halves. Negative five divided by two. Did negative five halves work? No. What is this telling us? Sean, this answers your question from before. This is telling us because there are no other possible rational roots that come close to that 2.25, right? This was it. So this is telling us that two roots are rational, which means the remaining two roots are what? Irrational. How do I find those irrational roots? We're going to use synthetic. Ready? So we have zeros, x equals a half, and x equals one third. Do we agree those were our two zeros that we found that worked? And now I'm going to use synthetic to get function down to a degree of two, then factor or use quadratic formula. So my original polynomial was a degree of four. Every time I use synthetic, how many times, how many degrees does it go down? One degree. So since my original is a degree of four, how many times do I have to use synthetic? Twice to get it down to a degree of two. So you can't use the same zero twice. You have to use different zeros unless it's a double root, then you'd use it twice. But if it's not a double root, we don't use it twice. So that means I could only use a half once and I could only use a third once. Let's get started. So I'll do a half first. I'll use a half first. So I'll put a half in the box. And then I'll list out my coefficients from my original polynomial. 6, negative 5, negative 29, 25, negative 5. 
we're going to bring down the six. Half of six is three. Negative five plus three is a negative two. Negative two times a half is negative one. Negative 29 plus a negative one is a negative 30. Negative 30 times a half is negative 15. 25 plus negative 15 is 10. 10 times a half is five. Negative five plus five is zero. Should it have been zero in that column? Yeah, because we already know it was a root, right? We already knew it was a zero. All right, now we have to do it again, but be careful. We're going to use the one third, but now we're gonna use our new coefficients. Don't go back to the old one. Now we're gonna use the new coefficients. So for the new coefficients, we have six, negative two, negative 30, 10. A third of six is two, negative two plus two is zero, zero times a third is zero, negative 30 plus zero is negative 30, negative 30 times a third is negative 10. Should we now be down to a degree of two? Absolutely. So using your new coefficients, can somebody write out the polynomial for me? What is it? Six what? Six x squared minus 30 equals zero. Now we solve. So I'm going to add that 30 on both sides, divide by six, and I get x squared equals five. To undo a square, we take a square root, but the minute I take that square root, what do I have to account for? Plus minus root five. Just for fun, to show you, in my calculator, I'm going to do second square root five. 2.24, isn't that pretty close to what we saw in the graph? All right, just to show you. Okay, so our zeros, now we gotta just list them all out. Our zeros, our x equals a half, a third, and plus minus root five, those are our four zeros. How am I doing with time? Oh, the bell's gonna ring. The only thing you might see in your homework that I did not show you, let me stop recording.